Oggy, why now? Uh, 35 seemed like a good uh, a good number, a nice round number. Uh, no, I mean, it's. I've, I've just had a fantastic time. Nothing goes on forever. And it just feels about about right to retire. Uh, you know, I'm still young enough and fit enough to be able to go out and do some different things that you can't do when you're working full time in football. So uh, it will be hard to leave the club from that point of view. But I'm really looking forward to uh, retirement, spending more time with my wife, family, grandchild, doing the things that probably uh, granddad should be doing. I think. <laughs> uh, it's pretty much that work family life balance then that you're looking to address, I guess. Well, it is. I mean, I've been so lucky, you know, I had from, from leaving school, okay, I had a year in the police force, but I was part-time with Chesterfield at the time. So football has been my entire life and I would never, ever have believed it uh, when I signed the first contract at Chesterfield, which was a one-year contract with one-year option in their favour. I thought, if I can get through one year, I've done well here. So I'm just amazed that it's 40-odd years later and I've, you know, a, I've been in football all that time, so I'm very, very lucky. I've got some great memories, uh, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Do you think you're a better goalkeeper than you ever would have been a police officer? Uh, you're a far better goalkeeper when you're retired, that's for sure. I've just been. Re I've had some fantastic, mem uh, you know, people that have tweeted. Uh, comments, everything like that. So I thank everybody. I can't do social media. People tell me about lots of these things, but I thank so many people for all. You know, it's overwhelming to see the things that they've said, uh, the support that that I get, and uh, you know that, that's what makes it all worthwhile. And as the manager was saying, Mark Robbins, you know, you're known the world over. You're a name I know, and he name. said some very nice things as well. And uh, I've enjoyed working with Mark. It's been brilliant. He's doing a wonderful job with the football club. I mean, the team are bouncing, aren't they? You know, we. Uh, I think he's got the Midas to it since we came in, uh, won the checker trade a couple of years ago, and then promotion last year. We don't know how this year is going to pan out yet. We're on, you know, it's not in our hands, but. You know, we're on the verge of those playoffs, so uh, we've all got our fingers crossed that things do work out for us. Coventry wasn't your first club, but it certainly was your last club. Can you remember, though, your first match for the Sky Blues? I do, yes. Uh, it was Aston Villa at Villa Park. I soon found out just uh, the intense rivalry between the clubs. It was on match of the day, and uh, Bobby Gould was the manager. He was the one who brought me in, so I thank him for that. And we had uh, we had a good young side then. We we struggled that first year badly. We won the last three games uh, to stay up, which was uh, a feat in itself. But we did have some incredibly good players who were young and finding the feet. Stuart Pearce was playing. Trevor Peak had, I think he'd been at the club a year. Dave Bennett, obviously, so Regis came in that year. It was, uh, and I, I can't name them all, how many mm. people are, but it was a good young side that was evolving. And uh, that first game was, uh, you know, it, it, it was an experience because it was my first, uh, it was my first game at the top level with Coventry. I played a couple of games at Liverpool, but that was only really as, a, as an understudy. And uh, things, you know, things really got off uh, on the right foot right from day one. So uh, I was thankful for that. So you said, well, "This is it. Oh, you know, I'm making it now as well, a professional." It's funny because uh, when when I found out Coventry was interested and I came uh, and I came to uh, to talk, the club just felt it felt right. I, I felt at home from the very first moment I walked in. The first person I saw was George Curtis, and we seemed to get on very very well together. Uh, Bobby Gold was the manager. Great John Sillett was coaching at the time, and uh, it did feel good. And uh, we had a great uh, team rapport at the time. And I thought, yeah, you know, it's a great training ground. This this is a really nice place to play football. We're in the top division. Uh, whew, I hope it can last a year or two. Thirty-five years later. I think it lasted. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of highlights, not least '87 at Wembley. Everybody talks about '87. It, it's it's a life. It's a, any player's ambition to win anything. So it, it obviously stands alone uh, in my memories. Uh, but not just for, for us as players or the staff or anything like that, but it's what it meant for the fans, the supporters, the city of Coventry. It, they were just unbelievable times and uh, I think we've just got some fantastic supporters at this club. They, they stick with us through thick and thin and uh, you know they've been magnificent and uh, they, they made that occasion. I mean, it was a fantastic cup final, one of the best, uh, certainly in, in the era people were saying it was the best. 
and uh, there were just some great, great memories, but it's the fans, the supporters that make those memories. And can you believe all your matches for the Sky Blues was, were in the top flights of English football? I mean, um, plenty of relegation scraps, uh, certainly 1997 at White Hart Lane springs to mind, where you were, not single-handedly, but uh, you were very busy for the last 15 minutes of that game. We were, and that was, uh, gosh, uh, the nerves were jangling a little bit in that game, I can tell you. And uh, we knew, uh, so our, our kick-off had been delayed 20 minutes, so all the other games had finished, Conte have got a history of doing this, I think. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was filtering through that we were 2-1 up and uh, Spurs were coming on stronger and stronger. And, you know, against all the odds, people were saying, yeah, we can stay up here if we, if, if, if we keep the lead. Thankfully we did. The scenes after the fans, it, it is like winning something. So the relegation battles were tough, they're hard to take, they aid you, but you know when you, and we were lucky when we survived on the last day in those times, it was like a cup final, the feeling, the adrenaline rush, looking at the fans' euphoria, uh, they were great times as well in a, in a weird sort of way, because they weren't leading up to it, that's for sure. <laughs> In all those years playing, who was the best in the side? I mean, you've already reeled off some great names from when you first joined. I'd, it, listen, it'd be unfair to... Uh, I've, I've played with some great players. Gordon Strachan at the end of his career, who was manager as well, was brilliant. Dion Dublin, Trevor Peake, I don't think he's a better defender. How he didn't play for England, I don't know. How didn't you play for England? Well, but people have been very kind to say that. I did play for England because we had some very, very good goalkeepers at the time, anyway, and uh, that's just the way things are. But... Uh, you know, it, it was nice to be close and it's nice to be talked about. Uh, you know, but going back to your question, so many, Gary McAllister, I, listen, you know, the, the, the whole of the 1987 Cup team, Cyril mm. Regis, I mean, there's not a better striker than Cyril Regis, is there? He was absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, for the club. And, uh, yeah, I could name, I could name many. We'll put it the other way. Who was your nemesis? Who was the one striker that you sort of oh, facing them again? Uh, Probably not, Cyril when he left. I better not say Ian, they're right, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there were lots of them. Uh, there were there were lots. They were you know they were good. I'm trying to think who used to score the most goals. Virtually every every striker I talked to has scored a goal against me at some stage, <laughs> including our manager who likes to remind me every day. <laughs> You've coached longer with Coventry than you played, but I guess it's still people know you as uh, the player. Really. Yeah, they, they do do, and uh, you know all the uh, all the comments that have been made since I announced my retirement yesterday. A lot of those are uh, about my playing days, but I've also really enjoyed the coaching aspect of things. It's nice to work with young players and just be a small part of uh, their progress, you know. So I think all coaches will tell you, they get, the, the, they get job satisfaction and pride from seeing young players that they may have coached go on to, you know, have great careers themselves. And uh, that's why we're in it. That's why we do the job. Yeah, I was going to say, you've seen a few sort of go on from, from Coventry to, to bigger, well, bigger and better things, really. Absolutely, I remember Chris Kirkland, uh, he, I was still playing at the back end of uh, when, when, when Chris was starting. It was great to work with him, you could see what a talent he was going to be and what a fantastic career he had. And you talk about England caps, I mean, if he hadn't have got injured at a couple of inopportune times, I think he would have been England's goalkeeper for quite a number of years. Uh, we had Casper Smeichel on loan for six months, you could see what a character, what a personality, what a good guy he was. Uh, it doesn't surprise me the, the career that he's gone on to have. Kieran Westwood was uh, a really, really talented goalkeeper when he came. I love Joe Murphy. And now we've got you know, Lee Burge. And Lee Burge is somebody who's come up through the academy. Uh, I think he's done fantastically well for the club. I think he sometimes gets some unfair criticism. All goalkeepers make mistakes. You, know, you see that with De Gea this week. Uh, all the top ones. Uh, but Lee's done brilliant for the club. And, uh, and there'll be the others to follow as well. Did you prefer working with the younger ones as opposed to the more sort of experienced pros? I like both, you know, because what, what you can do when you get the older player, uh, the older goalkeepers with the younger goalkeepers, you can get a little bit of banter. Uh, the older goalkeepers have always been brilliant in passing on their uh, experiences down to the younger ones, and that's how you learn. I, I learned as a player through watching, trying to copy good habits, you know, asking questions, and uh, 
that's what I hope our, you know, that not just goalkeepers but players generally should be doing. You know, it's massively important. You can't just wait to be spoon fed everything. You know, you have to observe, you have to look, you have to see what you think is good, what what would work for your game. You have to take it into training, experiment a few things. And uh, and somewhere along the line it all comes together and and, and that's how careers are, are built and shaped. And looking back over your career, how has the game changed? Uh, massively. Gosh, has it changed? Well, in my day, I think, uh, well, the only person that dived on the pitch for a start was the goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, you got, you know, goal... Goal celebrations were a handshake and a pat, pat on the back. Now they're orchestrated dance routines. Uh, there's been so many changes. You could take your shirt off and celebrate and not get booked, though. Oh, you could do that, but nobody ever thought about it. It was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've obviously spoken about when you leave, it's going to be that balance between work and family life, so you, you'd be spending more time with the grandchildren and stuff. Are you still playing cricket? No, no, I packed up probably three or four years ago. I'm a watcher now and I play a lot of golf, so it'll be a good chance to work on the golf and handicap. Uh, I will be going down and uh, watching Warwickshire at Edge Baston a lot more than uh, I've been able to do in recent years, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, looking forward to getting away uh, when it's a little bit cold. I mean, football is a, an 11 month a year job, mm. so you, you, know, you get a nice break you know, in May and June. But uh, beyond that, uh, you're there for the for the next ten or eleven months. So it'll be nice to have to be able to go where I want to go, when I want to go, uh, with my wife and family. Three o'clock on a Saturday. Is it more likely to be the Arena Park Shopping Centre or the Rico Arena for you, depending on what your wife? Well, has in mind? fingers crossed, it'll be the Rico Arena. Doctor, uh, hundred percent, it'll be the Rico Arena. Uh, I'm not, you know. Coventry, you know, it's a horrible saying, really, country's in your blood. Uh, it is, you know, I can't wait to uh, sit there, be able to watch, you know, be able to watch the team, uh, probably with, uh, probably more relaxed, I would say, than, than actually when you're down there and you're part of it. But uh, no, I intend to fully be there supporting the team, you know, every week. And will Sunday's match be more emotional than a week Saturday, which would be your final game? Unless, uh, of course, the playoffs. Well, exactly. We can't rule the playoffs out, so we've got to stay focused and, uh, and wait and see what pans out. But uh, if we don't make the playoffs, I mean, obviously it'll be emotional because it'll be the last, uh, it'll be the last game, uh, the last home game. So, uh, you know, I find it all a little bit overwhelming. I can't wait to get, uh, to get it out of the way, really. But uh, it's going to be great. And like I say, the fans have uh, been fantastic and they've said some really nice things. Uh, and tweeted some nice things as well, which is uh, which which makes it all worthwhile and makes it very memorable. And I'm very appreciative of it. You're certainly the right size for the goalkeeper because you've been kicking my leg all the way through this uh, interview. Um, but just on behalf of BBC Coventry and Warwickshire and all the Sky Blues fans, thank you very much for all the memories. Thank you, Steve. Fitting on Sunday that it's Shrewsbury, though. It is, yeah. I'd, I'd well, Shrewsbury is a great area. I had a fantastic two years there. I've still got lots of friends there. I played cricket for Shrewsbury Cricket Club. I played cricket for the county, uh, and we had uh, we had a really good football team there and did well. We were in it was Division Two then, the Championship now. Uh, we had a really good side, and I love the area. My son was born there. Uh, the people are great and the football club's great as well and they always make you feel at home when you go back. So, yeah, it is, it is it's quite a pregnant thing that uh, that we are playing Shrewsbury uh, on Sunday. Yeah, and uh, hopefully the future of the football club at Rico will be, be sorted at least in the short term by Sunday's game, which would be nice as well. Wouldn't it be a nice celebration for everybody? That would be fantastic for everybody. It would be fantastic for... The players would be fantastic for all the management. Uh, it'd be fantastic for the fans, the supporters. I think that's the the key thing because Coventry City should be playing at the Rico. Everybody knows that, and uh, we've all got our fingers crossed that that's going to happen. Mm. Now we could talk all day, um, well, for a week about your playing career. But what what is do you feel is your biggest achievement, or what are you most proud of in terms of your coaching spell with the Sky Blues? Uh, it's good. Quite, I mean, I've done quite a number of roles uh, since the time I came in, working 
with the academy and young players. So I love to see young players develop. I've got to say that uh, it's great to see them come in at you know 10, 11, 12 years old. The kids, you know, the parents, and uh, you see them grow. You see them grow into teenagers, and you see them grow into adult, uh, adults, and they mature. And the successful ones, you know, have you know to, to look at the careers, and that's what you do as a as a coach. You you know, you follow all the all the players that you've uh, you've coached or that you know or have been at the club, and and the pride and satisfaction is thinking that yeah, you might have had a little bit of something to do with uh, you know with their future careers. Mm. Is, all, all coaches do that. Is Burgi a prime example of that? Burgi's absolutely a prime team. example. We brought him into club. I was academy manager mm. uh, when he was fourteen, and he came in with this long hair right down his, and he just got rid of that. Uh, and, you know, as I've said before, Lee, you, people have to remember, you know, Lee's come in as a young kid, he's, he is one of her own, and uh, he's only 20, he's 26 now, people might think that's a middle of age, but I don't think I joined this football club till I was 26. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if a goalkeeper looks after themselves and he uses all the experiences, uh, you know, that he's gained in the past, you know, his best years are ahead of him, so... Uh, you know, I hope, you know, I think he's done brilliant for the football club and uh, I hope he goes, goes on to uh, do even better things. Because oh, I think the over 150 first team appearances was yes, a fantastic yeah. achievement yeah. itself, yeah. coming from the academy. I mean, he's had two Wembley finals. Yeah. And, you know, he's had some brilliant performances. As you say, he's had his critics over the years as well. I think unfairly. I mean, listen, you know, I'd. I had many bad bad spells uh, as a player, you know, everybody does. I'm reading the papers now and people are at it for, you know, with De Gea. Uh, De Gea is probably the best goalkeeper in the world, but he's having a bad run and uh, people love to uh, love to write about it and uh, it's a story, you know, and Lee Bird has had so many really good games for this football club and sure, you know, there, there are areas of his game he can improve, we all know that, he knows that uh, and that's what... Uh, that, that's what he goes out on the pitch for every day to work on. Mm. I mean, he's out of contract, so he's sort of future something. Have you been able to give him any advice about you know what what's next for him? Well, do, we talk and uh, what we say privately and everything like that. Obviously, we'd say private, but uh, Lee, you know, like I say, Lee, uh, you know, Lee's got his views. You know, he is focused one hundred percent on playing for this football club at the moment, and uh, that's all I can say. In terms of. Corey, where is he in his development? Because he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got an option for another year. Yeah, yeah. Well, Corey's a really talented goalkeeper, and he, he's another one who's getting better all the time. He, uh, you know, he's massive, so people can see him straight away. He, and and again, he's got, you know, he is a very talented goalkeeper, but he, you know, he's also got areas of his game that he needs to work on. Uh, he knows what areas to work on. They don't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. These type of things evolve. I was talking about that uh, earlier about our, our, our players improve, and uh, certainly as a goalkeeper, he's got time on his side. He's 21, but it's been great to work with. All the goalkeepers have been great to work with. Liam O'Brien's been great to work with. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed all you know all that. That's why you know that's why we do it because uh, you know the, the best feeling in the world is to get out there and, uh, and and train and play football and coach football and and see the things that you do in training come off in, in games. Mm. And just, you mentioned next season you're going to be a regular at the, at the Rico, um, hopefully at the Rico, um, but uh, you're not tempted to go season ticket at the Falcon. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good, good point. Uh, I'm not sure that Will will be there at Falkirk. It'll be interesting to see where Will plays next year, actually. So his contract's up. So mm -hmm. uh, if there's anybody in uh, managers out there who want a, a left sided player, a left footed <laughs> ball player, please come knocking. So, uh, uh, ideally, you'd like to come down to the Midlands, would you? I'd love him to come down to uh, the Midlands. Uh, that, that would be absolutely fantastic. But football's a no nomadic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You never know where it's going to take you. Uh, but yeah, I mean that would be great if uh, you know if, if if the family came down here and uh, he could find a club in the local area. That'd be absolutely brilliant. But at least you have more time to go up to Scotland, won't you? Know? Well, there is or that. I mean, if 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 he stays in Scotland and plays in Scotland, that'd be brilliant as well because it means that we can have more holidays up north. It's a bit colder, but it is a great country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the little things, you know, like being in football so long. It's like family Christmas. I mean, you've probably not had a, what. 
a family Christmas. Like no, you, you no, you're right. You have a you have a different Christmas because you generally you'll have a couple of games over the Christmas period. You'll have a couple of games New New uh, New Year. Mm. Uh, you're training in between, uh, and then you're after juggling those things. Now I'm not complaining because I wouldn't have it any other yeah. way, but it will be you know it will be nice to do something a little bit different, obviously, uh, and and that's the bit I'm looking forward to. Oh, all the best. Thank you very much, Andy. Long Thanks for your support again. and everything. And I'll be seeing lots of you yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's I'm not going anywhere. You know, yeah, some it's great. Obviously, um, you said you've you've seen some of the tweets. You're not social media yourself. But you said you've seen some of the tweets of all the fans reacting um, to you leaving. So I was wondering what um, what you said to Lee and um, how you told Lee that you were going and the reaction that he had. He, he was relieved. <laughs> no, I told him, uh, I mean, I made this decision to retire a long time ago. You know, I was probably uh, January when I talked with Mark about it. So that's, it's, not been a, it's not been a secret in close circles, but it's just, you know, it's, it's when the right time is really to, uh, to make it public. Uh, I told Lee three or four weeks ago, you know, and... Uh, We've always had a good rapport with each other and everything like that. So uh, he was obviously sorry about uh, about the fact that I was going, or at least that's what he said. <laughs> and uh, you know, but but we'll keep in touch, you know. And uh, I'll follow his career, and not just his career, everybody's career. So it, you know, it's not just about Lee. You know, the fact that he's been our goalkeeper for a number of years. We've talked about him quite a bit, but all of them, you know, they've all been brilliant. I've had messages from. You know, lots of the older goalkeepers and uh, lots of the players as well. It's uh, like I said before; it's overwhelming the uh, the messages that I've had, and uh, you know, for that I really appreciate it. So Sunday then, how are you feeling? Excited or scared? Which one? Bit of both. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, we've got a game to win. So uh, you know, the focus has got to be the team focus has got to be if we can still make the playoffs. It's got to be. It's got to be winning and getting the three points on uh, on Sunday. Uh, but it will be emotional, and uh, you know, and in a funny way, I don't want it to be all about me. It's about the team. It's about potentially finishing off the season well, and uh, and if we can sneak into the playoffs, and it's not in our hands, but if we can, we're going to make sure we do it. So, although we're talking a lot about my retirement, it's not about me. It is about the players. It's about the present and. Uh, that for me will be the focus uh, on Sunday as well.